Hello and welcome to another gameplay review on the Vakayu Gameplay Channel. And in this one, we have a little cheeky look at Diana, once more being played by EDG Jeje in high elo on EUS during the World's Bootcamp. Now, as all of us remember, we did have a very serious uh, Echo Shells. We did have a very serious uh, Diana meta not too long ago. She was not because that first clear was just it was a natural. She could do everything that any jungler could ever want. Now, though, she is not in as good of a state as she has been for sure. The win rate is still significantly lower than her peak days, but we are seeing the Chinese jungles, specifically the EDG jungles, both of them in solo queue, using the pick a little bit more, just testing the limitations of how she might fit into the meta. And because there's a lot of you Diana enjoyers in the viewership of this channel, as well as in general in terms of play rate, when she was playable in the jungle at, as a top tier pick, everyone was really really excited to play this now let's see how it plays out but i can tell you from the end game screen that he ends up doing a lot of damage cargo ruins it on your screen and i'm laughing because of the damages you you have not seen this much damage share in a solo queue game in a while trust me it really is a big job now to do that obviously dana doesn't have the best pre-6 ganks it all comes alive as soon as you um really get that ultimate and you know the thing about Diana is though even though the clear is definitely hampered in comparison to what it used to be she still has a hell of a lot of snowball and damage potential assassination potential team fight potential so we just have to sort of get to that part and navigate the meta a little navigate the clears and our strategies a little bit differently now nice early ward here on the red we see that the echo started the blue side he knows this, so what he can do here, which is why I love this clear, and it's something I talk about a lot. You can have like a Red Raptor's Grump, look to gank, look to invade, whatever, uh, fall back to crab, fall back to blue fall, uh, blue, fall back to wolves. It's just a different way of playing. Now, you can also buff buff Grump, okay, and then reverse clear up. This is great if you know your bottom lane is going to be either under control or pushed in. And, oh, or pushing or neutral. I mean, it doesn't really matter. But the whole the whole goal here is, yeah, pu pushed in. If you're pushed in, and the enemy jungler path's down now, you you get priored on on the bottom lane crab. So yes, you could gank it uh, if you do this clear. But at the same time, if they have prior and a crab spawns and you five camp it, there's nothing you can do. So what he does is starts in the red. Knows that they know that he started on the red. Sequence is down. Hits the grump. Hits the wolves. Hits the raptors. Reverse clears up. We see that the Echo's got nothing up, which means we know he's bottom side. Absolutely standard clear stuff, but I love the fact that he reverse cleared it. You do not see it enough. If your bottom lane is going to be pushed in, and you're not going to have prior for, the, for, the, for that rotation, like I said, I kind of hesitated when I was talking about it because I thought maybe you could gank it, but if you're five camping, it's obviously not going to be the case. And uh, you're worried about that bottom crab and not being able to actually win that fight. Move on up, reverse clear, get the top crab 100% 100% guaranteed. It throws the enemy jungler off as well. This is interesting though, the Echo did not look for anything. I mean, they have no sums, and the Echo's more concerned about this crab. He could repeat gank here, he could loop back down, there we go, as expected. Gotta track this. Let's see how Yasuo does, Echo will have flash up, Yasuo does not. Bot lane could rotate, he's pinging, help me, and then Rakan's rotating first. This is all as we expect. Rakan actually did a pike hook. <laughs> And Yasuo dies. I mean, he got to kill himself already. Now there's a lot of rotation. So Diana basically... This is okay. You know, if people want to fight and waste their time on this. I mean, obviously the Echo getting a kill is unfortunate. But now, the benefit is, if the bottom lane had not entered into this sort of uh, randomness, the skirmishing, and they were kind of chilling, you could easily go and gank it first, and then go back up to clearing. So let's see what he actually might try and do here. Because if Echo... Okay, he's going to Grump. If Echo did this, and this, and then this, and maybe would hang around for a bit more, you could look to counter gank. But I think you're just playing it safely is absolutely fine. Remember, you will be giving up that pressure with Diana early. Echo does have a better sort of ganking kit pre-6. Uh, this is being pushed up so you can 100% Echo. You can see the pings. I mean, you if you're farming wolves right now, you need to anticipate that the Echo will be looking to gank. The Yasuo is trying to, you know, get his passive proc and investigate the Raptors there. Good stun from the Aurelia. Basically, if the Yasuo walked back up, he would have been stunned by the Echo. GG now can rotate directly from the Raptors. Sorry, Wolves. 
and get into the mid lane. And this is where those lane counter ganks really comes in. Here we go. Auto attack and conqueror. And now you die. Hello. <laughs> the QE resets. Beautifully done. And that therein is what you look for when you play Diana. It's not some kind of direct counter gank or sorry, not some kind of direct gank you're trying to do. It's looking, observing, tracking. Where can I get this counter gank? You see here, there's a little bit of the is Echo in the area. Maybe I can slide in here and counter gank, but obviously at that point, Echo um, probably looked to reset logically. So what we do is we sequence up, we keep our eyes, we watch the Asura, cue the rep to put nothing happens. We know he's there. We cut in and we get two kills. Pike now roams. And interestingly, we fall back down to the bottom side. I think in this situation, you could look to go Raptors, but use your ultimate spike, please. As soon as possible. Once you get six, use it. That's why I like it a lot. Obviously, there's this RNG crabs. I understand this, uh, this component as well. And then you can translate that down, but there's nothing else. So if you're going to make this play, make sure you're using your ultimate as soon as possible on a lane that preferably has no flash and isn't yet six. That's huge. Ganky Bree 6 there's big, and now we can float to the top side. So, well played, good read. Um, we're pinging the, 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 I mean, they're pinging the MIAs here, I don't know why. We saw the, <laughs> we saw the Diana. There's no way she goes back down to Dragon with, with, with 1700 in pocket. We kind of want to clear our top side, and then we can look to reset, go down. Gank bot, Rakan's only level 3. And so begins the snowball. Echo shows up, hello. <laughs> <laughs> this bottom lane. I mean, you guys are telling me, but my support's 0 and 4 by 7 minutes. How do we carry? Observe. Okay, now, we do know Echo's there. You do know he has no blue buff. You do know he started blue, which means you could look to do this, 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 and maybe this. But when you have a losing lane and you have a huge lead, I do like the option of, hey, let's go back to base because we have a lot of gold. Let's spend that gold. The Echo is going to assume we are doing what I just said. Which means, in this case, let's collapse on down. We created mid prior for ourselves, thanks to um, the skirmishing. Let's chase him off the ground. I'm happy to give him that. Take our blue, finish our smite quest, and uh, observe the tracking. Here, you know, if you are playing in a lower elo game, and you can, you can think about this. If the echo and the bottom lane make this play, and you push them off, they might try and sneak the dragon before their base. If that's the case and you have any inclination that they're doing so, cut in and kill them. Because you just spent all your gold and they would have not spent their gold, which means you would have a lead. Now Echo out of base will most likely have to go to top side so we can sneak away as red. Well played. Uh, roaming mid laners, Yasuo dies. <laughs> Pike is level four. Dine is doing a red. Echo shows up again, still has not done his blue. And if you track him at 41 CS when he bases and track him at 41 CS here, you'd know that he hasn't done any of his blue side camps either. There we go. Okay, you gotta be careful here because this is not literally 4v1. I know you can most likely turn around a decent amount, but you're gonna give shutdown when you die. And Echo will, will snack that. So, mm, I mean, there's a jungle video coming for the main channel. Obviously, it's a jungle video. There's a video coming for the main channel this week where I'm gonna talk about a very good player. And this very good player has been doing certain things in order to get fed and carry very, very quickly in terms of getting those wins, uh, snowballing and so on. But if you are a snowballing jungle or jungle that can really take over and farm fast as well, uh, this is pain. This is, this is big pain. Uh, don't enjoy this at all. Uh, then, you know, going two for one sometimes isn't exactly bad. You might think, oh no, I died. But all I think is, well, you got two kills for it. If you don't have a shutdown, it's, it's obviously better. If you have a shutdown, then it's not ideal. We think perhaps on the Herald. So we hit the plant. We clear the vision control. We see that that's not the case. So we know that that could probably fell down to the blue side. So we can sneak into the back of the pit. No one should join us. Darius uses his prior. Echo's now, Echo's just out of position. I mean, he's 3-1-1. She is 3-1-1. But look at the CS. Really big gap. Diana really had a much better sequencing component to her game plan, and Echo was not in division. That pillar still does not show. We snack it. <laughs> he stole the Herald. Oh no, that is not good for them.
Why are you taking the Herald, Pike? <laughs> Unless they're communicating it. That is possible. I, as I said, I don't have all the world's accounts. Unlikely, but still. Jung jungler should take it because you can afford the ability to maybe do something here. Do something here. You can reset, go down, do something here, depending on, on the plates. Always better than the jungle set. Level 9 to level 7. 511. This is good. I love this. We hit this. The Echo does not take the opportunity to secure it. He falls back to his jungle. He understands that she's on it. Diana takes it. Wins the fight. Back to base. And now, Rocket Belt is complete. Sorcerer Boots are complete. We have 511, 88 CS. Let's begin. The work now begins. But Diana could reach this point a lot sooner in the previous edition of her jungle uh, success. We're clearing that control. Well, thank you very much, Yinks. Wolves, Gromp, sliding yourself into a nice lane gank. If they force it, we should probably rotate immediately, which Diana does. We hit, and we go. Watch the W from the, from the Echo. Rocket Belt to avoid, well played. Exhaust is used on the Echo. We can dive into this mirror, be very careful. We do have ultimate. We use it on a three man, very nicely done. Explosions occur, shields occur, pike resets occur, bounties get absorbed. Hmm. Play around the ultimate. Don't go in as heavy as she did unless you have that ultimate. I'm getting confused by referring to she as the champion and, and he as the player. So if I go back and forth, I apologize. Usually I speak from the perspective of the champion, just purely because uh, it's easier. Keep some ob objectivity and, and detachment and it's neutral. But um, in, in, in the case here, we're following a world's player, so I, I can swap between he as well. So, Pike uses the Herald nicely. We get to take the full tower set. Uh, I kind of like the concept of potentially just yoinking this Drake, though. You don't need it. You know, you don't need it to snowball. Uh, it's more about rotating with your team and making sure you're present with your team as you've elevated the game state. We took the five plates. We see the echo on this ward. I love this ward. We see the echo collapsing. Potentially, we could have done this uh, by ourselves while they can take bottom lane. There's a few alternatives. But in higher elo, when you don't need it to snowball, no, that's just a dumb invade. But why are you doing that? But that's why we love to elevate the game state. You know, I talk about this a lot. Let's take it at the exact moment that... Maybe someone will try and invade us and your whole team is rotating to another side of the map to take the tower. They will lose a dragon. I mean, they should in theory. Should, could, would, maybe <laughs> lose the dragon. Stop typing. Stop typing. You West. Hey, I mean, I'm dragon obsessed. I acknowledge this. Sometimes I get a little tunnel visioned, but taking objectives within the flow of map movement should always be the goal. Um, and if you could take an objective with no downside, take it. Okay, the dino doesn't hit anything in that situation. I'm trying to rope in the Rakan, but it's fine. We got a fully stacked um, Conqueror. We have a huge QE combo, which is just absolutely nuts when you've got the Rock Belt and the Zonias. We have survivability as well. Beautifully done. Pike gets the reset. The damage is insane. And it might not look like that inting bottom lane is inting anymore, but let me be very very honest with you if you go look at the match history again all of the match histories are linked in the description below you will see like 45 percent or so of the damage of this game is diana it's it's a huge amount of damage here and even though pike is getting the resets even though some people are kind of doing some things that are kind of useful if diana isn't unloading that amount of damage in these fights they're not going to actually get those kills at the end of, of, of the fights, at the end of the rotations. They're only getting all of this because JJ is doing all of this damage. And that's the truth. Now, we do have um, Morello's completed, which in this case, <laughs> very good. Right, let's keep, let's keep tracking of, let's keep track of that. Because we don't really have, you know, like, it's not, it's not like a Vladimir or Rust, but it's just really a runes, itemizations, and a little bit in the kits. So let's observe uh, how that changes. Because against a Yumi, sorry, against a Yumi and an Army and a Soraka and a Vladimir and a Rust, those numbers are always going to be really high for, for the healing denied. So let's actually see how it affects uh, your sort of um, lifesteal components as well. 
Beautifully done. Rockabot gap closer. That's why Rockabot's so good and fun on Diana and, and on Echo. It just... It's natural, right? For the for the, the combos. But I like this too. You know, you take your blue side. There's people here top side. They're rotating mid. There's no tower. Yasuo is here in a 1v1. Um, look to, to, to collapse and get a kill. I mean, there's three people top lane. We take the objective. I enjoy. And now what you can do is you can push the hell out of this. Take all jungle. Push the hell out of this. You can create so much pressure in the mid and the bottom lane while they commit all this to the top side. And maybe they go and try and secure that. But if they do, is it really worth them losing two inner towers? I mean, are you ever going to get a good Herald push at all if, you, if, if you're if losing too many towers? There's no ways you can get a good counter push. And obviously, they're, they're not taking it. But they still have to go back. They still have to buy. They still have to get back in here. Pike ends up inting a little bit more. Echo Storm at the W. Be very careful. We do have Zonia's available. Rockabot once again to avoid the stunning of time and space. Forgot the name. Help me. Parallel Convergence? Yeah. I got it. I was going to say the, the stun of Parallel Convergence, but um, <clears throat> I forgot what the name was briefly. So let's watch that again because I was stuttering with my words and thinking about things. We have to flash to get out. Yasuo went back to base. I think we've, we've overstayed a little bit here, but a beautiful again three man E. We're able to kill the um, we're able to kill the Trundle and the Samira as well as the Rakan also dies. So it's not the end of the world, but again, shutdowns are giveth away. Don't really want to do that. Right, back to base against our will. If you are the solo carry for damage, and as you can see, I don't understand. <laughs> uh, the, the needlessly large rod is very good. If they have tanky boys, any sort of magic resistance, um, void stuff in these situations can be good, but death cap will basically guarantee you supersede their squishy uh, magic resistance. Even so, plated steel caps, plated steel caps, plated steel caps. You are the only magic threat. And when you're the only magic threat, you are, it's your responsibility to do, to do more damage. And getting that death cap in really Playing into that is, is the best way to do so. Now, you're, you're over committing, so you should die. Uh, Samira does the dashy dashy, but it doesn't really matter. This is, I love this. Because now people are going to tell me, but I play Diana, but I play an assassin, and I can't flank. I mean, if, if this is happening in Master, I mean, obviously she was, she's a little bit uh, whatever, but in, in your silver games, your gold games, you cannot tell me that an ADC never missed positions like this. That's just nonsense, you know? And the 1 out of 20 games where uh, your team's are like 0-18 by 3 minutes, you just lose them. But the rest of them, you can have control, just like this. Just like this. Uh, watch how he cut the map all the time and was always around when he had to be. And basically, that's two heralds plus a dragon now. Should have probably taken the dragon earlier, could have probably taken the dragon earlier. But there was an inherent risk uh, for the, the blue team to try stuff. So. Again, split pushing. We know the heralds taken, they should be backing out. Frontline AP Diana. There's a lot of responsibility. If you pick an AP jungler and your whole team's AD, remember that, because they will build resistances. So your AD team, team, uh, teammates, colleagues, <laughs> won't be able to um, do as much damage as they normally would. So it's really on you to, to play fights properly. That's good. I like that. We do have ultimate available. Unfortunately, our Jinx dies, but that's expected as such. Now... Let's see, what do we have? The Yasuo is splitting on the bottom side. He's going to take that tower. There's nothing else here. We don't want to push too much into the fog of war. So let's rotate mid and push this out also. We can deny this war potentially, but we do want to be very cautious. I don't think we should. Yeah, very good. We just go back to base. Now we can reset. Go blue side. Go dragon. We got an RNG crab. We got all of this up. And then we can look to pressure these a little bit. And fall back to a Baron. That's the idea. Now Jinx is dead. So they should not push up too much either, but they're going to. In Diana's case, you can only play your game. If your team is not ready to push us five, if your team is not ready to look for a fight, don't please uh, go and do that. Too many times the Jinx will be dead or the Pike is dead, and you guys out of base just turbo run and try and do more. You die, they Baron, you throw. Just take the camps on your way out of your base, on your way through your jungle to the objective, the side of the map you wish to play on, and when your team is looking to fight, like here, let's make sure we rotate and we are present because we are the big carries. 12-2-9. Pike, what are you doing? Okay, watch the parallel convergence again. Rocket belt, just to be safe. 
Ooh, burns the, the ult, dashes back in, gets a double man ult. A lot of damage, but here I think we might be dead. Okay, no, I lied, we're not dead. <laughs> the Echo just walked into it. The shield, and um, she, she hit the Q. So Darius is splitting, very good. I wasn't sure actually if um, there might be a little bit, I wasn't watching the cooldowns of the enemy team. So that's good, well played, beautiful, obviously. Professional player, this is from China, playing on super servers, Ionia, Korea. That's easy play. <laughs> okay, we take a dragon. Diana, in this case, if you have someone you commu uh, you're communicating with or you see your, your ADC or mid laner doing this, you don't need to go down if the, if, the dra if the enemy jungle is dead. You can, in fact, just go push waves. And you're seeing where a lot of this farming is coming from. Pushing the map forward all the time. And when people are dead, not looking to fight unless you can make the fight. Here we go, we saw the echo. So we can win fights with three levels up. Again, once the parallel convergence is avoided with the rocket belt, turns in the Samir with the ultimate, manages to blow her up, destroys the echo, the trundle comes forth and thusly will also be destroyed. Pike, <laughs> it's nothing. It really comes in with lifesteal, but we are Diana. We have shields and lifesteal of our own from Conqueror. Trundle goes back in, Rakan saves him with the Guardian plus the shields, dashes back into the base. And that's what we call making a play. If you are fed, I mean, this is making a play, it's well played. I thought maybe she, uh, uh, she could be dead, but Diana turns it around. And over here, that's just making a play. I mean, you got death cap too, so that's just funny. That's just really funny, well played. And you know, imagine an Aurelia goes back in. Imagine an Aurelia goes back, we could end the game, but I'm gonna pause it here. Why is he going back out of here, right? To snack Groms, to snack Camps and reset, instead of trying to push to end. Because, look at the waves, okay? You, you have a lot of minions here, you've got this blown up, you've got this blown up. You could try, but Darius doesn't have TP. Darius is just walking down, Yasuo is dead. They're all gonna be respawning and Aurelia's up in seven. This is where people throw. Now, if you're all communicating and you understand, okay, let's hit the towers, let's focus the towers, we can end, do so. But if they're gonna all respawn and you are the most fed member and your team really aren't as ahead as you, so it's, it's a bit more even, then this, is, can, this can be a very coin flip situation where everyone dies and they get a reverse Baron from this and they get to push out two super minion waves with a Baron and you lose a lot of gold. Now I will say, if he had come here, I do think it's highly likely they could probably look to end depending on how it goes, but I don't know the results based it because now you're looking at it going, oh, maybe. We don't know that when he makes that call. Resetting here just to go and get ourselves a juicy void stuff, which still works against squishies, by the way. Um, it's still a, it still affects the amount of damage you put out to a great amount. Then it's, it's just a safer play. Because you, <laughs> you can do that. You can do that and you can bear it. Um, I think here we can just absolutely relax. There's no stress right now. 16 to 11. Start the Baron up. So I've, I'm learning today that you could probably solo that. That's interesting. Rakan comes to ward. Nothing you can do about it. The scanner is going to deny a little bit of vision. The Yasuo manages to secure it. Like a good jungler looking to hit the wards instead for vision score boosting. Very nice. <laughs> Smite dead. Oh, there's so much damage. This is the build of dreams, by the way. 2,300 healing. Um, reduced. Denied, reduced. But this is much. This is just a much safer play. You got two inhibs down. You just assassinated their egos. Go back to base. Get your void stuff. The whole team. Pike, man. You go back to base. Just get the Baron and I'll shove it down. It's a much safer play. And there's no risk almost at all when you're this fed. Dead. It's not too difficult, right? You've got the QE, you've got the E, you've got the reset component, you've got the ult, you've got your W for shields, and obviously you have your auto attacks. It's not too complicated to run. And the rocket belt was used beautifully. This is a great example of how you can still carry with 70 plus percent kill participation. You can still be a little bit farmy early in the game as long as you understand your counter ganks, as long as you understand when to be present for your team. And honestly, you know the limits of the champion, which 
EDG and China definitely know because Dino is a power pick and LPL is a power pick everywhere. There you go. Thank you very much for watching. Please do like, share, and comment if you did enjoy. Consider leaving a subscription. Leaving a subscription. Just subscribing straight up. That would be great. Uh, this channel and the main channel. I'll have a whole bunch of uh, videos coming for you. Both channels this week. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.